Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Tuesday, October 14th. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service, not me. Well, here's Hurricane Gonzalo as the sun rises this morning. Uh, absolutely blasted St. Martin uh, yesterday and last night, and Antigua yesterday morning, which is south of Barbuda. Can't see it on the screen here. Uh, absolutely blasted both places, has come up now and is moving away from the islands you can see well east of the Virgin Islands in Puerto Rico which dodged a bullet with this storm which has been very impressive in how easily it has generated strong winds despite what has honestly been a less than terrific structure it did form an eye wall yesterday which helped focus some of those winds uh, but looking at the IR structure today even now, the North Eyewall, uh, pretty weak, still some dry air getting wrapped in uh, that we thought was going to make this struggle a bit, but it has managed to strengthen into a healthy hurricane in terms of its winds. Uh, the recon this morning just went through the eye as I'm making this video, 110 knot winds at flight level. That's solid support for a Category 2. The pressure that you can't see at the center here was 970. So this is a very healthy storm. Uh, hopefully folks in the islands were prepared. This did bring stronger hurricane force winds than even the NHC expected, but they had a good forecast for this, bringing it to hurricane status before leaving the Caribbean. That was a spot on forecast. Now, as we move on, uh, the storm is going to be moving toward the north, and the next uh, land area that may be affected by this is Bermuda. After recovering from Tropical Storm Fay, which was a borderline hurricane when it made a direct hit on Bermuda just a couple of days ago, Gonzalo may be a double hit, or uh, be the, the second out of a double hit for Bermuda. And if we look at water vapor imagery right now, we have Gonzalo, and outflow is expanding nicely already, but you see this upper level low over Hispaniola moving to the south, and this is already moving into a better environment north of Puerto Rico here uh, that we talked about with this upper low backing away to the southwest will allow upper level outflow to expand away from Gonzalo, likely aiding further intensification. Now, uh, what this does is when we go out to the GFS on day one, we see again the upper low down here, you see the nice outflow showing up on the model, indicating the nice environment. But we see this trough coming through the southeastern US right now, bringing severe weather. As this moves east, this trough will get closer to Gonzalo and start imparting southwesterly shear. So if we go to the GFS uh, by 60 hours out, this would be on Thursday, we see this trough now over North Carolina, and you see the southwesterly flow in the upper levels starting to move over Gonzalo's circulation. And this shear could act to start weakening the storm before it makes it all the way up here to Bermuda. The concern is that storms, especially in years like this where they like to strengthen in the subtropics because this is where the air is the most unstable in a year like this, is that sometimes the southwesterly shear does not actually damage the storm as much as you think it's going to. In fact, sometimes they intensify in spite of southwesterly shear in this particular part of the Atlantic. It's hard to say whether that will happen here. It will depend on how healthy Gonzalo's inner core is at the time. But there is another good uh, news limiting factor for Bermuda here, and that's that the, the water is starting to cool down. And it is mid-October now, so this water is not as warm as it was. Gonzalo right now over 29 degrees Celsius water. As he moves north toward Bermuda, that water decreases uh, to 27 to 28 degrees Celsius. And uh, that's not uh, going to be particularly supportive of a major hurricane. Gonzalo will be a major hurricane on the way to Bermuda, but could weaken to, say, a Category 2 uh, before hitting Bermuda. That's the official NHC forecast right now and uh, hopefully that cooler water will induce weakening before hitting the island but as it speeds up it will not will not have a, a lot of time to weaken so Bermuda is still likely to get a nasty storm very close to it and this is the official forecast track now Bermuda's right here the official forecast track is just ever so slightly a hair left of Bermuda but this is essentially a direct hit and uh, right now a lot of most of the models are agreeing on a track very close to Bermuda and this is a concern now. You see it has a major hurricane, the NHC does, before Bermuda weakens to a Category 2 as it passes by the island, would be a formidable hit either way. Certainly much worse than Fay by the looks of things right now. Certainly uh, needs to be uh, kept an eye on closely by residents there. Preparation should begin now as it's about uh, two to three days out. 
And then even beyond that, we're worried about the Canadian Maritimes here, the official track bringing it very close. A lot of the models bringing it right here close to the Canadian coastline. And uh, as it undergoes extratropical transition, this could easily still be a hurricane force storm by the time it gets up here toward Canada. That will be a concern for them as well, but further down the line this weekend. Now in the Central Pacific, we've been talking about this pattern uh, favoring some kind of development southeast of Hawaii, and here we go. We have Tropical Storm Anna formed in the Central Pacific, and now if we look at it here, there are some difficulties for this storm as time goes on, but it's had a nice convective ball uh, being sustained over the last 12 hours, and we see this giant upper low over Hawaii. Now this upper low is fairly large, and uh, any anything that large within 500 to 1,000 kilometers of a tropical cyclone is going to shear it, but you see it backing away very quickly to the west-southwest, and it's moving west much faster than Anna is moving west, and that's going to give Anna more room to expand outflow. This is similar to Gonzalo, where you have an upper low backing away. It's a favorable for the tropical cyclone following in its wake because it allows it to breathe better, and that outflow expanding aloft allows air to leave the top of the storm and it causes the air pressure to lower at the center which obviously strengthens the storm. We also have the upper low to the east as well so chances are this could have some nice outflow channels on both sides here as it starts moving west northwest in the general direction of the Hawaiian Islands because again you can't see much of them up here but there's a lot of storm activity in the North Pacific in the Gulf of Alaska right now and we talked about the concern that one of these big fronts coming down could weaken the subtropical ridge enough to bring this kind of a storm close to the Hawaiian Islands and that is indeed what the current forecast out of the Central Pacific Hurricane Center has right now right toward the big island as far as the track goes right now through Friday and Saturday and you see they have a hurricane here and this is very possible given the fairly nice environment that this will have the main struggles will be the potential for dry air entrainment from the subtropics and also as with Gonzalo the cooler water as we get into mid-October now we only have 27 degrees Celsius water on approach to the Hawaiian Islands from the southeast. Right now, Anna's forming over 28, 29 Celsius waters. They cool off a bit as she moves toward the northwest. And so this would only support perhaps a category one, maybe a category two hurricane on its way toward the Hawaiian Islands. But even that kind of a storm, I mean, we had a Zell earlier, earlier this year. It's uh, still very rare to get an actual hit on the Hawaiian Islands. And if this was actually a hurricane hit on the Hawaiian Islands, that would be an historical hit. So even if it's a Cat 1, uh, that would not be any small deal for these islands here. So this is definitely worth paying attention to if you live in Hawaii. Still several days of the rest of this week to keep an eye on this, but the general track toward this region is something we've been concerned about, and uh, we see that from the official forecast right now. We'll keep a close eye on that as time goes on. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.